All right, let's take a quick break from drafting. Not long. We're going to go right back to it. Um, I'll do this twice today. We'll do it once now and once sometime this afternoon. Talk about the deck that I picked up uh, last night. So this was my uh, draft last night. Uh, let's take a quick look at this. Oops, that's not what I'm looking for. I want time. Here we go. One hour, three seconds. Okay, so this was the deck that I played. Uh, let me just drag some things around here because it wasn't quite accurate. This was the deck we were talking about in the end making. The deck I actually played was slightly different. We have two Goblin Motivators in there. Um, and Lava Axe was in, it was this, is this 40? This is 40. Okay, so it was a red-white, so a Boros aggro deck was the cards I drafted. My first pick was Lightning Strike over here. Um, the deck didn't perform very well in the end. It had some minor Goblin synergies. I had two Motivators, a Veteran, and a Trash Master, um, presumably. Um, the highest the veteran ever hit for was one, but the one was relevant twice. The veteran went pretty well. It killed a number of creatures as it's entered as, as an ETB, which was great, but it did get shocked twice as well, which was pretty poor. Um, the deck seemed to run out of gas, so in the very initial iteration of this, I didn't have the Marauder's Axe or the Tormenting Axe or the Tormenting Voice in, and I had another Pyromancer and I think, uh, what was the other one? And a Swift Claw in there. And what I ended up doing was having to pull those for a little bit more reach, uh, be able to trade land and a card for two cards, and be able to have the axe to transfer around tokens. There were a lot of uh, ground challenges, pack beasts, omen speakers, um, Llanowar elves, uh, the 1-3 version. I think, I don't remember what they're called, but the 1-3 version, then M19. A lot of, just a lot of ground chaff that I had to get through, and I ran out of value pretty quickly in this. I drew very poorly. I had one game out of I played eight games. I had one game out of eight where I was hitting stuff on curve. The three drops were a little bit weak. It would have been nice to have a little bit more three drops. And Take Vengeance is a particularly poor piece of removal for an aggro deck, but it was my only removal offered. I saw no Hieromancer's Cages and no uh, Luminous Bonds. So the only removal I had with the two Take Vengeance is a Shock, which I don't think is very good in this format. Shock might be a pretty flexible card, and I did pick it over... I don't remember what I picked it over. I think I picked it over some sort of three drop, but Shock was really bad, performed terribly in this. I actually boarded it out in a couple games because my opponents just weren't running any creatures under three toughness, which means that the best it's ever going to get is a two for one on me. Uh, and Lightning Strike. So I just had very weak removal, so I had to push through all of my opponent's ground creatures, um, and I needed more value than the initial deck I had. Oh, initially, oh sorry, no, I lied. The initial deck was not this. The initial deck was, these two were out. I had the Tormenting Voice out, and the Marauder's Axe out, and I had, um, it's not in my sideboard, it looks like I accidentally messed this up. What is it called? Trumpet Blast. So the initial deck was this. And I ended up after the first, after my first, my first matchup was against Red Green Dragons. Um, the guy who was my first matchup ended up going, uh, he won uh, last night. He didn't go undefeated. I think he lost some games, but though no matches, he went undefeated in his matches, won the tournament. Um, and I beat, one, I beat him once, lost to him twice. The Trumpet Blast ended up being very bad cards for this deck. I thought they would be appropriate substitutes for Indestructible Charge or Heroic Reinforcements, or um, there's one more that I like. I don't really love um, Make a Stand, but the ones I like are, uh, let's take a look, see if I can show you the ones I like. So I really, really, really like wide boards in this format uh, with, why is it not showing this? Maybe it's make, make a Stand is what I'm looking for, right? So I really like this card. I had this last time and didn't get it this time, and that was a really big deal. I think this is like 25,000 fucking times better than uh, Trumpet Blast. Um, the other one I quite like is uh, for Red White is Heroic Reinforcements. I didn't see any of these. Uh, this card here would have been very, very solid in this deck. Um, didn't get either of those. I don't mind Inspired Charge, but uh, I don't think it's um, quite, I don't think it's that good, but it does allow you to trade up. Like you, you sometimes your creatures survive their blocks. You trade up um, as efficiently as Trumpet Blast uh, for one more mana, you trade up as efficiently as Trumpet Blast, but your creatures often survive. And Trumpet Blast offers no uh, no survivability. So this deck, I played this for the first round, found the Trumpet Blast to be nearly dead cards. Every time I used them, I basically two for one myself. And sometimes it was better than that. Like I would attack with a wide board and all my creatures would die and all their creatures would die and I traded up on all of them, but it still did not seem like what this deck needed to do. I ran out of gas after doing that and couldn't get the final pieces of damage in. 
Um, I ended up pulling out the trumpet blast and throwing in the axe and the uh, uh, where is it? And the tormenting voice for both some smoothing of draws to get rid of la extra lands to get some actual gas and some value so I could transfer the axe around on the tokens. The axe ended up being very good in this deck. I won uh, after that. I still won. Uh, two games and one of the games I won was entirely because of axe because I just axed every single fucking piece I, I could use cab twice uh, and axe was just like bounced from creature to creature to creature to creature to creature to allow me to actually attack into my opponent and force him to block so um, that ended up being a very good substitution I didn't miss the trumpet blasts at all I was really glad to get them out of my deck I took came uh, last night when I came back I was chatting with Sui about the deck and showed him he even suggested going a little bit further in this and um, cutting uh, getting in a uh, Lava Axe and a uh, something else he wanted, I can't remember. Lava Axe and like, an, and like the Pyromancer at the cost of like a Take Vengeance and a Motivator. I like Motivators. Motivators didn't do a lot of work in this deck, um, which is surprising. I just never got the Hellion Motivator combo off. I never got a Motivator on a Stag. I never got a Motivator on a Volley Veteran or a Trash Master. They're just never in play when that happened. I never motivated a Brute, never motivated an Ogre. The only time I had fucking Motivators in play this game uh, was uh, never motivated the Drill Master. The only times Motivators actually connected were with uh, Gallant Cavs and One Angel connection. And that's just not a very good set of connections for that. So some of it was draw related. Deck didn't have super high quality cards in it. Wasn't super high powered. Didn't have a very good end game. Um, and didn't have a consistent enough early game to push through. Um, again, I just think there's too many weak cards in it. Um, drafting was a bit weird. Uh, it was slightly larger. I think there were, man, there were eight in this draft. I think it was six last week and eight this week for the draft. Um, my opponent to my immediate right, I found out later, was playing red green. He was the guy who won the tournament, uh, but he fed me enough red cards early. Uh, presumably, and what it ended up being was there, he picked a lot of, um, he had a dragon, green red dragon synergy deck with his first pick being Lathless. Um, my first pick was Lightning Strike, so my first pick was a red card, and he passed me red cards. So I kept, I stayed in red, and my opponent to the other side played a four color deck uh, where his, one of his early picks was Demanding Dragon. And then he also had, uh, it was like four color flyers. It was the Demanding Dragon, a um, Psychic Symbiont or whatever it is, and a bunch of like little black creatures. His deck didn't seem very good, but I played him in the last round and he beat me 2-0 uh, because I land screwed both games. And uh, one of the games was a particularly heart-wrenching game from my perspective. I had, uh, I had three lands in hand. Uh, I had like a Take Vengeance, a Lightning Strike, um, a Volley Veteran, and a Star Crown Stag in hand with three lands, right? That's my opening hand. I'm like, not bad. I never drew a fourth land. So I never got to play Volley Veteran until like, I, I think at the end of that game I did. And his, his turn two play was Child of Night. And I'm like, great, I'll Volley Veteran the Child of Night. I'm gonna get great value out of this good tempo. And I think I drew land four on like turn 10, you know, when I'm down to like six HP, and I think I'd, at that point, I'd already take vengeance, the child of night, because I had no fucking recourse. It was just super painful. Uh, did opponents cast uh, removal on motivator? The black-white deck, the life gain deck that I beat in round two, it did uh, remove motivator. It re removed motivator using explosive apparatus. That deck played two to three explosive apparatuses, and I saw at least two pack beasts, if not three. So his turn, his his game two versus me was... Turn one was, I don't know, whatever the fuck it was. Turn two was double uh, explosive apparatus. Turn three was activate the explosive, one of the explosive apparatuses. Turn four was pack beast, uh, pull the apparatus back and place it into play. <laughs> like, like I beat that deck. That deck wasn't great in the end, but it was kind of amusing, the, uh, the synergy for that. Yeah, a lot of my creatures are zero twos. The Volley Veteran got shocked. The two games I did get it into play, it got shocked. Um, which was kind of unfortunate. So one mana removing it. I mean, it does have the ETB. The ETB was relevant, but still, it's kind of annoying. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I... I don't know is the answer to this. I liked the this iteration of the deck a little bit more. Sui wanted even a little bit more aggressive than this. He wanted the Lava Axe in, one of the Motivators out, uh, one of the uh, Take Vengeances out, and a uh, Pyromancer in, something like that. I missed a lot of the really powerful commons that would have been nice for this that I should have that would have been nice to have picked up and I just never saw. I saw no luminous bonds. I only saw the one stag. I saw no Pegasus coursers. All of those are really good in this archetype. Um, 
I didn't see any spark tongue dragons. I don't really like spark tongue dragons, so I'm not too upset about that. I liked my four drops. My four drops are the most powerful part of this deck, but again, I just never got to play any of them on curve. I never had a two, three, four, except that one game. And I won the one game I did have that. So I don't know. I'm not quite sure what to make of that. Um, yeah, taking the take vengeance out. I mean, I did get some value out of the take vengeances. I took I, I took vengeance on a demanding dragon. I took vengeance on um, some other big creatures. I would have no way to remove a five drop. Um, I did try fielding in a couple different things here. I did at one point play the Teutonic Rift uh, against the Dragon deck. There was the game I won versus my opponent. He couldn't hit two red lands, and he said as much. And his hand, he showed me his hand at the end of the game that he lost, and he had a Lathless and two Spark Tongues in there. And I'm like, huh, sounds like I don't want him to go to late game. I'm going to put a Teutonic Rift in there. Teutonic Rift did okay for me. It did kill one of his lands, slow him down by a little bit, and let me get seven damage into his face, but it wasn't quite enough to win the game. Um... I don't know the Lava Axes. I put some Active Treasons in, but I never got to cast it. At one point, I had two of these in one of the decks, I think versus the guy with the big flyers. You know, I thought maybe I could get some wins stealing that way, and it just wasn't, just never connected. So, I don't know. Um, I worked on my shuffling technique across the course of the week. So, going into it, um, I'm not sure if you guys I got a deck of cards right here. This is the deck, right? So, for me, I've always shuffled. These are the rifle, the, the riffle shuffling, right? So, riffle shuffling for me has always been very simple. Take like this, go like this, shuffle the deck. It's no good with sleeves. So it's not much of a change, but shuffling on the side like that is uh, a better way to do it with cards with sleeves. You don't destroy the sleeves that way. It took, a, I spent a little bit of time, maybe like 20 minutes one day, just making sure that I could change that shuffle up. Um, I did watch some videos on shuffling, which were pretty cool. And the one of them was basically like, if you shuffle, like, so you guys know, you're familiar with the overhand shuffle, something like this, right? You know, and then there's the pile shuffle where you just throw, uh, we put them into random like piles of eight and do it that way. And there's kind of like the smooch shuffle where you just like spread them out and shuffle them around on the top of the deck. And then there's the actual riffle shuffling. The riffle shuffling is seven shuffles like that to truly randomize a deck. I was watching some math ma mathematicians uh, guide video on this, right? Seven shuffles to shuffle a deck with riffle shuffling. If you do overhand, it's 10,000 to randomize. So um, I did better about randomizing my deck this time. I did do uh, seven shuffles. Uh, I did do seven riffle shuffles in between each game. I was expecting that to help with my mana distribution, not punish me, but I suppose it's just random. Uh, so there we go. So no idea card shuffling was that. Uh, well, it's funny because the first, the first week, I'm like, man, I keep seeing this combination of cards show up a lot. And I was only doing like two riffle shuffles because I was doing it head on and head on was catching the sleeves against each other. And I'm like, this is obnoxious. So I was doing a lot of overhand shuffling. And the first week I drew my sleep, like I had one sleep in my deck last week. My deck from last week was, um, where was it? Uh, just a second. My deck from last week was this one, right? It was a blue white wide deck here. And my deck from last week, I drew sleep like four of my nine i think i played nine games with that deck last week i think i drew sleep four or five of those nine games and it was with my gallant cav which came up i think six of those nine games and i only had one gallant cav there and i only had one sleep last week so maybe the randomization the lack of proper randomization was in my favor last week um as opposed to something that was uh, appropriate if you look at this deck compared to last week too or this this is last week's deck compared to this week's deck last week's deck was just a lot better um, our quality of cards are just a lot higher in here, right? We actually got some rares in this deck. Um, our four drops are very similar, um, again, but we have some Star Crown Stags, which are super good. We've got Luminous Bonds instead of, um, instead of uh, whatever that stupid uh, Take Vengeances are. We have Make a Stand instead of Trumpet Blast. We've got Sleep instead of Second Trumpet Blast. All much better cards. We still have an Inspired Charge in there. We've got a couple Flying Threats that are relevant. We've got the Aerial Engineer and the Snapping Drake. We've got good two drops as opposed to immediate, like instead of Swift Claws, which are aggressive but not good. We have an Archaeologist, which is very good. Got me a little bit of value. We have Surge Bears, which are pretty good. Had the Axe. Still had a couple Combat Tricks. Um, had a couple Flying for Ping Damage. And we had two Stags, which were like the backbone of this deck. Like the last deck was just like a lot better overall card quality than this week's, which is too bad. It's too bad. I just, I think it was a really, I've been feeling this way anyways as we draft M19, that Trumpet Blast. The, I, I feel like the wide decks are super good in M19, like unbelievably good. But it's interesting to see that not all the cards are equal in the wide decks. The Make a Stand and the Sleep are incredible. Inspired Charge, not incredible. Uh, Trumpet Blast, I think is probably actively bad. 
And it's funny because the cards on surface value look very similar. They're giving you extra attack power to all of your creatures in a wide deck, but they are not at all similar. Uh, how's IRL drafting compared to MTG Arena? Uh, I like it a lot. Um, surprisingly, I get an adrenaline response drafting, which is weird um, in person, but which I don't get at all online when I'm drafting cards. Um, I found it a little bit harder to keep track of. I, I need to slow down on my picks. I get a little bit, I feel a little bit rushed when people are stacking up. Like, so the way they play in, in the ones I'm playing, it's pretty casual. Um, they open up a card deck, pick a card, pass the deck over and like kind of stack it behind you. And at one point there were like three piles stacked behind me and I was feeling a bit rushed on time. And I wish I'd been able to just slow down anyways, ignore the fact that other people were rushing me a little bit and make my own decisions about that. I might've been able to spot that red wasn't open sooner and get away from that. Although it would have been hard when my first, I think three of my first four picks were red and my only decent removal was there. I did at one point pass a Lich's Caress. I think it was third pack, um, which probably means I'm not changing colors for it, but that's pretty good removal. It would have, um, it was interesting drafting a person. Um, I was hoping to see cutting colors reward me and it did reward me for white, but not super well. Like this week, last week I got some great picks. Like if I go to those decks again, last week here in the IRL draft, um, I got a very late Angel of Dawn. I got a very late second stag. This was my last pick in one of the packs. It was passed to me as literally the last card because someone took a dual land over it and it was in my colors. I'm like, great. Um, I got uh, Sleep came to me like maybe two thirds of the way through uh, like the second pack, which was great. Um, like I got pretty rewarded last week for cutting colors. And this week I got punished for cutting colors. Uh, it turns out because both of my opponents on either side were playing red, and if you just look at the card quality of this deck, it's a lot of commons uh, and a lot of weak commons and just only a couple rares and uh, rares and uncommons that were of value. So 